In this tutorial, you're gonna learn how to create a single product inside WooCommerce. We're gonna use Rainbow Macaroons as our product, and we're gonna create it inside our Macaroon WooCommerce website. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below this video. I try to answer them the best I can. My name is Bjorn Allpass from WP Learning Lab, where we help you get better at WordPress so you can earn more for yourself, for your customers, and for your business. If you haven't done so yet, make sure you click subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any future videos. And now let's get started. To create a single product, we're first going to go to Products, and then Add New. Let's give the product a name. I'm gonna call it Rainbow Macaroons because the store I'm working in right now is called Simply Macaroons and we sell macaroons. Not in real life, it's just for demo purposes. And now we just fill in all the fields below to create our single product. So let's start with the description. It's gonna paste in my description here. And this is something that is going to be visible on the product page. And it's gonna to have to convince people to buy the product. So make sure it's descriptive, make sure it sounds exciting, it's not boring, and it describes the product accurately so that when they actually buy it and get it, it is what you described it to be. So that's our description. This can be as long as you need it to be. It can be really long or really short. Just depends on what you need to sell that product. For the product data here, we're gonna choose simple product. We have a lot of options. We have tutorials for each of these on the channel as well. But for this one, we're doing simple product. And it's not gonna be virtual, and it's not downloadable because it's an actual macaroon that we're gonna sell. And the regular price, we're gonna make it $10 per rainbow macaroon. Sale price will be $750. If we add a sale price in, it's gonna have a sale price right on the product page immediately. You can leave this blank, you don't have to have it, and then there will be no sale price right now. You can always add it in later, and you can also schedule it. So if we have $750 here for the sale price, we can choose a schedule from when the sale runs. So we'd pick maybe January 1st to January 15th and that's when the sale will run and once the sale is over then the 750 will be removed and it'll just say ten dollars we can take out the sale price for now and then we can add inventory we can add a SKU number this can just be a random SKU that you create yourself or it could be a SKU that other companies use for the same product as well because sometimes people google SKU numbers if a certain store they buy from is out of whatever the product is they will Google the SKU to find other stores with the same product SKU and then order from somewhere else. So you can potentially make sales by having SKU numbers that are the same as other stores. Or you just enter whatever you want in here. Just something random. That's not very good. Let's do this. Dash three. This should be something that means something because you're gonna use this for your inventory. Click on manage stock. I'm gonna add 15. That's how many I have right now. I'm not gonna allow back orders. Back orders are when your stock runs out. People can still order it. You can choose that to be allowed and allow but notify customer. This is an option you should be choosing if you are allowing back orders because you need the customer to know that it's on back order. It's not gonna be shipped right when they order because they haven't been made yet. So I would always notify the customer or do not allow. The low stock threshold by default is set to two. This is the point where you get an email saying you have to make more of whatever this product is. In this case, rainbow macaroons. Maybe when we have five left, when 10 orders have been completed, we only have five left, we will have to create more. We'll get an email saying you're running out. If we check this box, it means that this item can only be bought on its own. It can't be added to a shopping cart with other products. So check this option if you want to. It's pretty rare that you choose that one, but it's available. Shipping options allow you to, to set the weight, the dimensions of your package and the shipping class. Linked products allow you to sell other products as upsells. So if you go to the sales page, these are, it'll show these products as an upsell. I'm gonna add in our variable product. Let's make a, a yellow macaroon as our upsell. And as our cross sale, cross sell, I'm gonna choose a, a blue macaroon. We're gonna see where these appear once we create this product. For attributes, we usually don't add these for simple products. This is more for variable products. So I'm gonna skip that. Under advancing and a purchase note, this allows you to send a message where this message is sent to customers after they purchase. The menu order allows you to reorder menus where this product appears. This is pretty uncommon. At least we're not gonna use this in this example. And you can choose to enable reviews. And that is all for those settings. We have a short description down below. I'm just gonna copy and paste this one because it's pretty short as it is. But if you had a really long one here, you'd wanna have a short and concise summary down here. Now on the right hand side, we we'll do some more work. We have to add a product image. So let's select product image. And now we're going to upload a 
image of our rainbow macaroon. But first, I'm going to compress it. And here's why. The macaroon file or image I want to use is this one right here, my rainbow macaroons. And that image is 7.4 megabytes in size. That's way too large of an image to upload to your site because it's going to take too much bandwidth to load and it's going to slow down your site whenever someone comes to visit it. So I'm going to change the file name first to macaroon rainbow. And then I'm going to Google image compressor. I like to use this first one here. There's a bunch of options you can use whichever one you prefer. Here we can compress JPEGs, PNGs, PDFs, SVGs, and GIFs. There's a lot of options for compression. I'm going to drag and drop my rainbow macaroons over to here. It's going to upload the file. That's going to compress the file once it's uploaded. And it's going to show us we've reduced the size by 85%. And then we can download it. And here it is right here. The file is still 1.1 megabytes, which is still quite large. If we look at it, the image is quite large as well. If we want to reduce the size of the image, we could use the WordPress cropping tools, but I find those a little bit hokey. I like to go into Canva and do it manually. So let's go to Canva and I'm going to create a new design. I can create design over here with custom dimensions. I'm just going to choose 400 by 400. So it's a square. You can choose whatever dimensions you want. You just type them in here and the dimensions or the, the square image is usually best for WooCommerce. So that's what I like to use. Then I'm going to drag and drop my rainbow min, the one I just compressed over to here. It will upload it. I'm going to resize it so it's the right size for the background or for the 400 by 400. Let's make it like that. And then click on download. Under file type, I'm going to choose JPEG small size. If you have the pro version of Canva, you can adjust the size some more and the image quality. I don't have pro, I just use the free version. It's good enough for me. Click on download. Let's show this in our folder. Here's our macaroon download or our rainbow macaroons. They are now 28 kilobytes in size. So let's rename these again. I just renamed it to rainbow macaroon small. So the original size was 7.4 megabytes. When we compressed it, the image was still quite large, but the file size was smaller. So it's down to 1.1 megabytes. When we use Canva to save a smaller JPEG file, it's done to 28 kilobytes. And that's the range we want to have for our images on our website, 28 kilobytes. Then you can also add image compression plugins like ShortPixel, which is the one I use on all my sites, to shrink them even more and make your site a lot faster. Let's go to add product image or go back to here. Click and drag, add our rainbow macaroons. We want to add alt text for people who use screen readers, and we want to add a title for search engines. It's going to call them Rainbow Macaroons. Click on Set Product Image, and now we have our product image. Then we have the option to add a gallery, which allows us to add other images, more images of the same product. I'm going to add some more images. I'm just going to do the same process we just did for this image to make it smaller in file size and smaller in actual size using the image compressor and Canva. And I'll be right back once I've compressed a couple more images. So I've compressed these two images. This one's down to 24 kilobytes from the original, which was 5.4 megabytes. And this one is 52 kilobytes down from the original of 7.5 megabytes. So I've got two more images to add. And I actually like this one better for our main product image. So I'm just gonna just remove this product image. I'm gonna set it to this new one. I'm gonna upload both of those. And I'm just gonna give them the same alt text and title, just rainbow macaroons. It's all for the same product. I'm gonna use this one as the main product image. It's nicely presented in a box. It's very nice. For product gallery, I'm gonna choose these two. When I click on any one of the images, we see a little checkbox appear, but we're only selecting one. To select more than one, we have to hold down control or command on a keyboard, and we get check marks on multiple images. To remove images from our little selected list here, just hover over the check mark, click the minus sign. I'm just gonna add these two because they're what's relevant for this product. If you add the original product image to the gallery, it'll be a duplicate, so you don't wanna do that. Just have your product image and then have other images for the product gallery. Now let's scroll up and let's choose our category of macaroons. We can give it a tag, let's call it rainbow, and then hit publish and see how this looks. Let's view our product. 
and we have our rainbow macaroons. Here's the title, here's the price, here's the description, 15 in stock. Down here is our product gallery that, that visitors and customers can slide through and look at different images. We have a SKU number here, our category, our tag, and we have our short description and reviews. And we also have, you may also like, this is the upsell. So if we go back into our settings here and we go to link products, under upsells, we have the yellow macaroon. That's what you see right here. And under related products, we have our other product on this site, which is a variable product. I have a tutorial for that in the card up above and the description down below if you wanna see how to make a variable product. And then if we add this to our cart, so let's just buy five of these. Let's do three, actually. Click on add to cart, go to view cart, and we see we have something from previous tutorial. Let's get that off of there. We have a rainbow macaroons added. There's three of them, cost $30. And here is the blue macaroon. This is the cross sell. So if we go back into here under link products, we see under cross sells, we have a blue macaroon. That's this guy right here. That's where the cross sells appear. Then we can proceed to checkout and someone can check out and buy the rainbow macaroons. And next up, you should watch this tutorial right here where we're gonna add custom fields and custom sections to this rainbow macaroon product. So our customers can customize their order to choose different colors and different delivery times and different options for their macaroons in this case, but you could apply this to whatever products you have in your WooCommerce shop. That's part of my WooCommerce playlist. You can check it out right there. If you haven't done so yet, make sure to click subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any future videos. My name is Bjorn Allpass from WP Learning Lab. Until next time, keep crushing it and I will see you in the next video.